Welcome to CURL 7.87.0, December 21, 2022. I'm, <coughs> as you know, and always on this, in these release presen presentations, I'm Daniel Stenberg. I work for Wolf SSL. I do CURL support and I work on CURL full time. You find me on Mastodon these days, of course, as Bagder at Mastodon.social. And I'm trying to wind down my Twitter presence a bit. So today I'm going to talk about this release. As usual, like a few numbers about what's happened in this release cycle, security stuff, features, a uh, bunch of bug fixes we've done, some of the removals that are pending soon and coming soon, and a little bit what's possibly coming next, the next version number and, and some of the features we are looking at uh, implementing. So this is release 212. <coughs> 212 releases, yes. And this time the curl team or, or the participation has been offered, contributed by 83 different persons and out of them then 40 were new and never helped out before. I haven't been credited before at least and uh, 27 2,771 persons in total, quite a lot of contributors. So 42 of those wrote code or wrote commits that are have been merged into the code, 20 of them new. So we passed 1,100 uh, <coughs> commit authors this release cycle. Very cool. And of course, we follow our regular release cycle, well, or we did it this time again. So we are at... Um, 56 days since the previous release and we are now also in total um, more than 9,000 days since the uh, inception, since it, the first curl release, 9,042 days actually. Uh, so uh, a long time. <coughs> of course we had some security advisories or security related things to talk about this time and I'm going to get into them. I just then want to emphasize that we, when, whenever you want to read about curl security advisories you of course do it on the curl site and this is the URL in the bottom there curl.se slash docs slash security dot html. <coughs> Other sources are usually less, um, well, thorough and careful about the details and specifics. So we did this, this is the first one out of two security advisors this time. We call, I call it another HSTS bypass via IDN. It is the CVE 2022-43551, as you can see there in the yellow text. And <clears throat> basically this is a security problem where if you use, if you try to access a site using IDN in the host name and IDN of that kind that gets replaced with their ASCII versions, um, well, read about it. It's another one of those confusions when you sort of, if you use different host names with different IDN combinations or encoded names in different times, you could sort of circumvent the HSTS. Um, upgrade thing in, in curl. Highly annoying, very similar to another uh, HSTS bypass problem we had uh, uh, last release or a few releases ago. So <clears throat> annoying and highly, um, I don't know, it hurt my soul that we had almost the same thing just the other way around pretty much and um, Hiroku Kurosawa found it. We rated it as a medium severity. Oof, not good, but not, I mean, it's not this, the sky is falling terrible either. <clears throat> Another thing we did then the other CVE we re uh, publish and, and fix in this release. Uh, there are two in this release. So the, the second one out of two is this HTTP proxy deny use after free. And this is even actually less of a panic. This is a problem when you try to do SMB or Telnet over a HTTP proxy. You know, you can tunnel virtually any TCP based protocol over an HTTP proxy. And if you try to do that with curl, 
you just whatever proxy you use try to use a tunnel through smb or telnet usually the proxy denies that sort of no 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 you're not allowed to use to go through to port whatever port number they use um, <clears throat> and if you do this with these protocols curl would end up doing it use after free it would actually uh, and it is a use after free that is in the when it closes down the connection and the use after free is also very sort of um, short in time be between those two. So it's a very tricky thing to get the timing right if you want to exploit it or use it somehow. I'm sure someone can, but that's also re the reason why we set severity low because it's most likely going to call, um, make you crash and, and burn and, and not be exploitable, but still a security problem. And I want to just mention that the um, curl security audit report that um, the sorry the, we are going to publish the security audit report for curl this evening my time or european time uh, i think it's midday then u.s time and i want to some just to mention that we will do that later i will uh, i will mention it on, on on social media and i will do a separate blog post about it and, and everything it'll, it'll come up on the on the curl website and it's done by the company trailer bits it's being organized by ostif ostif and it is sponsored by open ssf so thank you for those and um the report in case you miss all my all the announcements later the reports will be available on the regular curl website on the same url i mentioned previously uh, curl.se slash docs slash security dot html so and of course it'll I mean, it'll remain on that site for a long time. So if you uh, see this much later than around the release time, it doesn't matter. It should still be around there. <clears throat> okay, so that was security wise for, for this release. And we did some new stuff and we did some changes that we merged. And I want to highlight them for you. There, we count them as five separate ones. First, we uh, uh, introduce a new command line option we call dash dash URL dash query URL query and it adds a component to the query part of the URL that you're working with. I, if you go to the change log on the website, you can also, uh, sorry, if you go to the release blog post about it, you can see a link to my blog post about it. So you can, that goes into more details exactly what it does is actually just adds value pairs to the query part of the url you're working with pretty much as a way to offer when you when you write scripts or or uh, and you want to make it more convenient to add stuff to the url and it i mean it helps you with url encoding things and so on so it should make it easier to programmatically add stuff to the url we also added a new option to libcurl called curlopt quick exit. I've talked about this before. This is a way to ask curl to don't wait for threads when it uh, exits. Pretty much risk a memory leak. You tell curl it's fine, leave them hanging around because we are going to exit soon anyway. So for if you're writing a tool like the curl command line tool, you don't need to first wait a long time for the uh, threads to actually die and clean up and then do exit and then clean them anyway because you can just leave them and exit and everything will clean up anyway much faster so this that's why the name here curl up quick exit <coughs> this is actually a, a stepping back to this is the way curl used to work years ago always so this is just bringing back that ability and we introduced actually something that we should have done a long time ago a new sort of just a new define in the code that is an easier way for for write callbacks in libcurl when you write an application using libcurl and you have a write callback and you want to signal back an error it, it it something went wrong there is now a fixed define that you can use to signal error back to libcurl you could always signal errors back even before but this is more of a convenient way better sort of easier way to do it uh, than before <clears throat> we introduce a new way to cache the cer ci certificate bundle when you use 
it says here for OpenSSL backends, uh, it's actually for all the OpenSSL forks. And the, the concept is there for, for all the backends to use actually going forward, but it's only implemented right now for the OpenSSL one. <clears throat> and I'm hoping that others might follow later on to make sure that we can do this caching using other other backends as well, because this is a huge performance boost if for some particular use cases. So it'll basically just load the CA certificate once and then keep it in memory as, as long as the CA cache lifetime is, is there. <clears throat> um, and then finally, the last uh, thing we added as a change this release is, is a pretty subtle one, but uh, bear with me here. So we, we have this API function called curl version info that returns information about the particular libcurl instance that is running. You know, it returns version number, features, and uh, stuff like that. And now this includes all the features by name. Previously, it includes features only by bitmask, and you, you had to uh, and you know, bitwise and on those bits yourself using the defines. But this is a way to actually, now it exports all those features by name so that we can refer and, and check for them by name instead of the bitmask. This is a future proofing thing because once we go beyond 32 features, we will run into 32 bit problems. So this is a way to make sure that we can deal with more features going forward. So we're actually switching to using feature by name instead of feature by bitmask going forward. And this is a, this is a s small step into that territory so that it'll be a better path in the future, pretty much. So, <coughs> hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, I just noticed a little thing here. Okay, so um, we're at 155 bug fixes this release, and um, I'd say this is an ordinary amount, quite a lot if you think about the number, but of course we have big fixes and very tiny fixes, and they're all bug fixes. And some of them I want to mm, talk about right now, I think about 22 of them, so, so let's get into them at once. We fixed libcurl, of course, so I have a bunch of things that we did that fixed libcurl. <coughs> I blogged about this separately, and you saw the release image has had those base64 Im uh, encoding in the background because of this, because I improved the base64 encoding and the base64 decoding in curl quite significantly. Basically, it was really crappy before, and I removed the crap, and now it's more on par with everything uh, or anything else that does performs base64 encoding and decoding uh, in, in a reasonable way. <coughs> pretty much, I mean, base64 encoding and decoding is not a big part of curl, so it, it's not a huge thing for anyone, but I figured out that we did it in a really bad way before, and now we're doing it in a more sensible way, much faster when you want to do it, and without grow any code or anything. We worked on fixing a few things that improved our hyper builds. So we are we're still at I believe 12 disabled tests when you build with hyper, but we are we're getting there and I think this time we removed two of those so we have two less, two fewer tests disabled. So hyper is the HTTP backend you can build curl to use. It's, uh, still experimental because of these disabled tests, but we are slowly working our way to get all of those working correctly. And of course, we need your help to continue that. Uh, here's a fun little thing. So this is an internal function called curl get line, and it, it now works fine without a new line on th on the last line. Uh, this sounds complicated, but really, when when we had a some kind of problem before I fixed this function by making sure it only worked if you had a new line as the last character just it was a sort of a lame fix but it fixed the problem and but that made it <coughs> impossible to for example do cookies or .NET RC files consisting of just one line without new line in the end and we got this fixed now improves just the uh, standard. I mean, it makes it work be better with 
files in general and how it used in, how it used to work in the past too. So a little bit of a regression fix. We also f made sure that if you enable this option in in curl, there's there's also a corresponding command line tool option for this that ignores content length. You can now get an, a file from FTP that is growing while you're getting it. So once you ask for it, so the sort of, you know, during the transfer, the file is getting appended. So maybe you ask, when you start getting the transfer, it says, oh, it's 100 bytes, and yet you get 150 bytes. So it's it will it grew while you were getting the file and now it's fine to do that if you have this option set <clears throat> still a bit of a shaky area there for ftp because in with ftp you don't really know if you if the transfer was just prematurely cut off or if it's truly at the end if you don't have the exact size in, in the beginning i have gone through the entire libcurl source code and made sure that whenever we do parsing of numbers we don't use base zero in a lot of those functions base zero then being use whatever base that the user has specified um, and that using base zero then allows users to provide numbers in base 16 or base 8 and since we don't have that documented it could be a surprise to users and and possibly i mean be used in some malicious or nasty way and I, I don't want that so as we have everything documented to use base 10 I made sure that the parsers also only use and, and work with base 10. Going forward <clears throat> you know when when you do some kind of transfers when you send data in particular over HTTP here for example you could do a post you want to send post to a URL and maybe you get a redirect, maybe you have an authentication thing in progress. That means that libcurl might want to rewind the data stream and send the data again. So you send a post, you have to rewind and send the post again. I mean, that's not always how it works, but it can work like that. And previously, curl would do that rewind at the end of the initial request so that it would be ready for the next request. Uh, and we have now changed that. So now it doesn't actually do that rewind at the end of the first request. It'll do that in the beginning of the second request. And why does this matter? It matters because sometimes that second request is not performed. For example, well, let's not go into exactly why, but when that rewind also doesn't work because maybe you were reading from a pipe or something that you cannot rewind, it's much better to not have the error in the rewind in the beginning of the first request instead of putting so by postponing the rewind we can avoid the problems in those cases a very complicated thing but i think an improvement in general whenever OpenSSL returns an error or open ssl or one of its forks i should say because i mean we support four different flavors of open ssl right OpenSSL, BoringSSL, LibreSSL, and QuickTLS. So they provide really cryptic error messages in general. The, the error messages are often really hard to understand what are they talking about. And, and now um, uh, we uh, prefix those errors. So when we report an error that we get from OpenSSL, we prefix the error with the library slash version. So the library being the specific OpenSSL fork name and the version runtime that is being used, just to help the user understand that maybe that this error message that we don't understand comes from this version uh, of this library. Um, I fixed RT RTSP authentication to work again. It, this has been broken for a while, maybe a year. I don't remember exactly uh, when we broke it, but. <clears throat> Basically, it worked because it would piggyback uh, f internal functionality in a little bit of a, a bad way. So when I clean, when we cleaned up something in internally, that started to fail, and it took a while until someone fixed it. And I eventually did. I also improved the WebSocket API handling a little bit. Uh, now it we ha I uh, went through and make sure that we act correctly when the connection is closed 
I think in most cases at least, and I've documented how it works and how it's supposed to work and how it's exposed in the API. So going forward, please try it out and, and tell me how it works. And if there's more to fix, uh, let's fix them. Proxy related things that we fixed uh, in, in, in this release cycle, this, um, this is a cryptic description, but it's the proxy word here in uppercase is actually what they call the HA proxy protocol. It's a very basic thing uh, so that curl can send, well, we call it the X HA proxy protocol. And anyway, it was broken because it could accidentally send that proxy message more than once for a single connection, which is completely wrong and, and messed things up. Now it doesn't do that anymore. We have worked, where I, um, Stefan Ising has worked a lot on, on getting things internals, internals in general in curl to switch to, to what we call the connection filters. And we, we blogged about it and, and, and emailed about that separately. So getting that's an internal architecture, new design we have in curl called connection filters. And by switching more of the TLS backends and handlings over the connection filters, we have now enabled HTTP proxies, HTTPS proxy support for many more TLS backends which I think is good because um, HPS proxy is cooler than HP proxy. One of maybe the most frequently reported regression in the previous release was that I broke the no proxy handling. No proxy being when you know when you want to you want to use a proxy w of some kind and then you have this extra option that says do not use the proxy when you connect to these particular hosts or patterns of hosts or IP addresses and everything. And I modify that handling in the previous release. I actually also for the first time added a lot of test cases for, for that handling, but it didn't matter because I broke it in several ways anyway, in spite of my added test cases and everything. So I had to fix that in several steps and now I'm pretty sure that we have brought back the functionality and restored it exactly as it was in 785.0 and before that so uh, I'm crossing my fingers uh, I hope this is fine I think it is and it's documented and it's even more tested now and um, mm, yes we also fixed uh, uh, the IDN handling for proxies because we had IDN problems <laughs> before, you know, I mentioned this idea, circumventing HTS with the IDN, blah, blah, blah. We had it again in this release. And when I fixed it previously, I then accidentally broke IDN for proxies because eh, complicated stuff. <clears throat> I think it works again now properly for, for proxies, but who uses IDN for proxies? Come on, uh, <clears throat> some do. Okay. Some of the tool fixes. This is, I, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that we haven't had this reported before, but, but anyway, in curl, we more or less accidentally supported or used the, the user's locale when we read decimal, well, floating point numbers, right? So if you would set, um, if you would set maximum time, for example, to allow the curl tool to work, yeah, you know, dash M, you would use 3.41415 seconds, like uh, with a fractions a fraction of a second in, in that number. When we would parse that number, we would actually, actually accidentally, I would say, use the locale and not the dash dash C local for the number parser. And what, why does this matter? Well, it matters because the decimal separator is done different in different locales, right? So if you were, for example, write a script using that, you would use three comma 14 or 3.14, depending on which local you're in. So this script would actually <laughs> break <laughs> depending on which local you were using. <laughs> Completely silly. But now it's actually using this C locale by force. So which means that it's using the you know, the American style of floating points, so you should use a dot now, the period, not the comma. And if you look at Wikipedia, you can see that roughly the, the world is split in two. Should you use a dot, should you use a comma? In curl, we use a dot. 
I realized that this also breaks or then all the users to the, who actually adapted to this and used the comma in for their locales, you know, Swedish locale, German locale, uh, I guess a lot of locales where, where they would use a comma instead of a dot. Is silly. Uh, I, I introduced support for a timeout in the read callback and this is this is pretty much it happens like this. It, so it, you can, for example, when you were using telnet with curl, you could, for example, set a maximum time. I will only spend uh, three seconds on this telnet connection, but then it would still get stuck in the read callback because the read callback didn't acknowledge the timeout. It would just sit there waiting for standard in to uh, to do anything. Now it doesn't. So now it, the the maximum time actually works for for telnet as well. It should actually work for for most kind of operation. I mean, it should be, make it better for other kind of operations too. We had a minor confusion when you were using uh, this option, dash capital D, it's called dump header um, with the long version. It's actually just save the headers, save the response headers from a transfer into this file. But if you would do multiple URLs or if you would do multiple dash d, uh, dash d's and stuff like that it was a little bit messed up when it would append and when it would recreate the file now it's much better uh, cleaned up documented how it works going forward someone also noticed actually this was, was reported i think three or four times that we really messed up i messed up how the error messages were shown when you would use this dash capital g together with a invalid URL, it would actually say out of memory. While it wasn't out of memory, it was just uh, confusion. So now it says, can't do this, the URL is bad or whatever it says. We also fixed the build in a few ways. <coughs> uh, we have this script called gen.pl. Not a very good name for a script. Uh, it doesn't matter, but it, but it generates the man page, the curl.1 man page for the curl tool, you know, all the 249 command line options, it puts all of that into a single NROF formatted file, 5,500 lines or whatever. It, it, it We improved the, the, the links in that file, which is how it refers. When you mention an option, it should mention the option correctly so that it highlights the option correctly. And by highlighting the option correctly, it also makes the man page version on the website get rendered correctly with correct links and so on. Um, much be so much better, uh, in particular the website version of the man page is now much better because it has better and more accurate links. We also also fixed this weird thing called... So GDP and Valgrind and uh, guess some other tools as well. They support this debug info D underscore URLs uh, environment variable. So if you have that set, it can use those URLs to download data in, at runtime. And this script that we use that, run, that runs the curl test suite, it used to always unset that en environment variable because it caused performance problems to someone in the past. Now it doesn't do that always. Now it only undefines that symbol if this <laughs> new command line option is set. Pretty much you know, a weirdo thing for those of us who run the test suite locally. And, and usually nobody needs to care about this. We brought HTTP3, a few basic initial HTTP3 tests into the test suite and in the CI builds and everything. Uh, so hopefully this will help us to not break the H3 build um, as much going forward as often. Uh, <coughs> finally, I introduced the SO, using the correct SO name when building the shell library in the CMake build, which is basically, you know, the SO name. So it's uh, the ABI version of the library really so that you can make sure that uh, you get the correct one for your library. It works on Linux and a lot of other Unix systems. It does not work on some more rare systems. Um, 
yeah, it's been a long time coming. It took some pain to get it done, but now it's there. We also now mark a bunch of options as deprecated when you build. Well, they're marked in the headers as deprecated, but that deprecation thing and the warning system for that only works with GCC and new enough GCC versions, but uh, that's from GCC, I think, version 6, and I'm pretty sure most of us are using GCC version 6 or later anyway, but still only, uh, not with Clang or other compilers, only with GCC. <coughs> Whew, those were some of the bugs, uh, bugs that we fixed in this release. There were 130 something others, of course, so read up uh, the details in the changelog if you want to follow more specific one or if you have the specific thing you want to learn more about. <coughs> so we f have a few removals pending. They are, I mean, we have uh, mentioned these before and this is a more of an alert and an information campaign to tell you about we are removing support for builds without 64-bit data types in March 2023. So not too far away from now, in three months roughly, then we will remove support for these platforms, or rather that kind of build. So <clears throat> it that is only for support with 64-bit data types. That means we will support 32-bit architectures and 32-bit builds still, but most of them have since decades supported 64-bit data types. So this isn't going to change anything for virtually anyone except for a very few rare systems compiler sets which for some reason does not support 64-bit data types but uh, I've tried to ask around I don't know anyone who actually will suffer from any problems with us doing this the source code and everything will be better and easier and we will um, get a happier life when we do this. We also have removal of NSS pending for August 2023. So if you if you think that NSS is crucial or very important to you, your application and your life, tell us about it because otherwise we will remove support of that uh, in August next year. So next version of curl is most likely going to be 7.88.0 unless we messed something up royally in this version, which, I mean, it has happened before, but um, I hope we don't this time. So um, in that release and why we are thinking about um, doing that bump of the m minor number is, of course, that we have things planned, pending to get merged. I have this new feature I want to propose the flag for the URL API called curly U Punicode, which is uh, an option to ask the URL API to extract the URL as as a Punicode instead of the IDN. If you sort of if you set a, a URL or hostname using IDN, you can extract the Punicode version of it. Pretty much. Um, if you, for example, want to get a canon canonical version of a URL, if you perhaps want to compare two different URLs, it's quite impossible to do that if you use them in IDN versions. So in that case, you would really want them to get exported or read, read out again using Punicode instead of IDN, for example. And that's why I think we should offer this feature. I have a PR pending for that. We have been discussing and work, and there has been work going on for IPFS support for the curl tool for a long time. Maybe it's uh, that has matured enough now and it's ready for merge. It is not it's not really it's not a native support for IPFS. It actually uses a HTTPS gateway instead of it, AP, IPFS natively, but it uses IPFS URLs in the curl tool. So the look it looks like IPFS support. We have a uh, file colon uh, directory listing support pending. There's a PR and um, that might be ready for much this time. We have a PR for multipath TCP. It hasn't moved much recently. I haven't seen any activity recently, but maybe we can get that in shape and get support for that added. Um, and of course, I have a PR for adding these things to the curl tool to show the 
certificates and the number of certificates from the TLS handshake. And by showing, I mean outputting them pretty much in, in the style how the, you know, if you're, you have you ever used the OpenSSL tool, it has a show search option, basically outputs the certificate information about the certificates from the handshake and the certificates themselves in PEM format. Um, and the reason why maybe we should add them to the tool and not only rely on the OpenSSL tool is that curl works with a more backend so it would be independent of OpenSSL and it works for HTTP3 and quick connections as well which the OpenSSL tool doesn't so it I think it makes sense it fits and the the support for these these powers the it's already present in libcurl so it's just making sure that the curl tool can access and use and expose those powers to in the command line tool as well. So the next version 7.88.0 is planned for February 15, 2023. And I want to emphasize then that, um, well, of course, that's the pending release notes. We are going to keep that updated. So if you're ever curious what we are about to ship in the next version, that URL always keeps the I mean, the, the work in, in progress, the pending release notes is there updated uh, regularly. But the next release then, 7.88.0, is going to be the final version 7 curl release. Um, that's the plan. And I really hope that we can stick to that. So that's the, going to be the last version 7, because after that version, that version planned to be 7.88.0, after that we intend to ship curl version 8. On March 20, 2023, and if you then sort of do the math here, you could see that we I, I mentioned February 15 on 788.0, and we're going to version 8 on March 20. That's just what it is a month and a few days between those two releases. So there's not going to be a feature window in that release cycle. And of course, version 8 is not going to be in a major drama or, or big wells and bells and whistles included. It's going to be just an, a bump, but it's a bump to make sure that we can sort of reset the minor number and get started again. Hopefully, it'll also help people to feel that if you're running old version 7 releases, it'll feel old when we get started and working on version 8. And then this also, of course, happens to be Curse 25th birthday. So version 8 on the 25th birthday birthday it seems uh, fine exactly and then we can stick to version 8 for forever no i don't know uh, there's no i mean we have not planned any further version bumps or anything let's focus on version 8 on march 20 and it's going to be a great day if you need help anything support with your curl in your products your services your whatever get in touch. I um, I offer curl support full time um, and different support packages. I work for uh, and we do the curl support under the Wolf SSL um, umbrella. Uh, get in touch and we'll get it working. If you have or suspect or see a curl bug issue, then uh, submit it on in our issue tracker on GitHub and we get on them real quick. If you see a suspected security problem in curl, submit it on Hacker One um, on the on this URL on hackerone.com slash curl. And we of course have a bug bounty program. So if we confirm it to be a security problem, we offer you money uh, as a reward for your report. <coughs> These are the great um, sponsors of curl in December 2022. Hacks, Fastly, Wolf SSL, TeamViewer, Kirei, Corallium, Sovereign Tech Fund, and Elastic are the big ones or the bigger ones. And of course, then we have a set of silver sponsors at the uh, bottom of this slide, as you can see. A bunch of them, and they really help us run curl and pay for things that we need to pay for. So thank you for, for helping us. And this is curl for this time, 7.87.0. And um, I hope I will see you in uh, another 56 days when we do the next release. Until then, bye.